we thank you tonight. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord Jesus. We exalt your name, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you because your word is true. There's no doubt that every word that has been spoken are all coming to pass. Amen. Amen. You told us perilous, perilous times shall come. And we are seeing all the evidence of the perilous time. Father, we pray for the church tonight. We ask, oh God Almighty, for your strength. Amen. Father, Lord, we ask for the outpour of your spirit. In these last days that we empower your church. Amen. Lord, I pray, oh God, for the anointing of these last days. Amen. Creation awaits the manifestations of the sons of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, in our activities and our consistency and services to you, growth will come. Amen. Transformation will come. Father, we are standing before you tonight because we need your grace, we need your power. Amen. In this time that we are in, there's no room for fake. Amen. There's no time to play church. Amen. Lord, your word is true. Yes, and all the handwritings are all written out and they are clear to our sight. But Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Because in every battle, you have had the last laugh. Your word has never returned void. Amen. And your word will never return void. Amen. It must surely come to pass. Amen. We are here tonight, oh God, to feed on your word. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, will not live the same. I will not live the same. Lord, strengthen my inner man. Lord, my Open my spiritual eyes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for tonight. For giving me the opportunity to be in your house. Open my eyes to the knowledge of your word. The Bible said that the people of God are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lord, bring us to the truth of your word. Pray tonight. Say, Lord, bring me to the truth of your word. Unveil your word. Your word to me. Guide me in the truth of your word. Father, I don't want to hear man. Amen. We don't want to hear ability or knowledge or skills. Lord, we need revelation of your word. Amen. Jesus, reveal yourself in your word to us. Amen. Let our life begin to engage in activities that expresses your presence. Amen. Let our life begin to see evidence of your word and your power. Amen. Above all, oh, Heavenly Father, Amen. let there be a deep conviction in our inside Amen. that when you appear, we are ready. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Let your name be glorified tonight. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shall we begin, man? Talk to somebody next to you and say you are blessed tonight. Talk to somebody and say you are blessed tonight. It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. There is a one thing I desire that I'll seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Turn your Bibles to Daniel tonight. As we continue in this series, I believe that we can reflect back to where we start. It is very important for us to study the word of God. And build up understanding in the word of God. And have an internal conviction within us. Fully persuaded. Like the book of Romans chapter 8 from verse 35 said. You are fully what persuaded. That nothing can separate you from the love of God. That God has loved you so much above anything that exists. Amen? Amen. To the point that he died on the cross. 
and gave us salvation. And last week we stopped at verse 32 and 33 and we realized how God can be very, very judgmental. He's a God of judgment. Amen? How much time did he give to Nebuchadnezzar? 12 months. I mean, after revealing to him what he was going to do, he allowed him time to change. Space of time to change. So every day that passes by in our life is a time for us to connect to a change. Turn around in our wicked ways. Turn around in the things that we know they are not right before God. Because why? The hour of the Lord is coming. The hour of the Lord is coming. When that word can still be in your mouth that you've used to and always say and you think nothing can happen, the hour of the Lord is coming. But it is very important that when the hour of the Lord comes, you should find us already repented. So that that hour will become a blessing. Shout amen. Amen. Shout amen. amen. How long did Nebuchadnezzar spend in this awkward situation? Seven years. Amen. Seven good years. Hallelujah. Seven what? Good years. Let's go to verse 34. After those seven years, you could imagine living like a beast, feeding on grass, nails, his nails change, his, his body begin to grow hair like the eagles, like feathers or birds. All that judgment that he has been warned in advance. Now let's go to verse 34. And at the end of the days, and at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven. Shall we amen? I what? Pay attention tonight. Did what? Lifted up what? His eyes. Where? All this why? He could have done that. Don't let a day pass. You don't lift your eyes to the heavens. Amen. Don't let a day pass. You don't connect to the heavens to see where you stand with God. Every minute, every second, and every hour of your life. He has to look up to the heavens. Why? It takes you to be selfless to look up. Amen? Amen? Before, what was he doing? He was looking to himself. It was about himself. What I built, what I did, what my power has done. If only he had looked up to the heavens for once and take his eyes off himself. Praise God. Can somebody shout amen? Can we learn that from Paul the Apostle? He said one thing. He said, no more I. I won't look at I anymore. But what? I look who? Christ. Who dwelleth? Live it in me. It is very important that you acknowledge, pay attention tonight, the one that gave you the life you have daily. Amen. When you wake up in the morning, it is not your power. Acknowledge the one that gave you the life. And when you recognize that, it takes away every element of boast. Or every tendency for you to think it is by your power that you woke up. There are a lot of people this morning that slept last night that did not wake up this morning. So your life, you must constantly dedicate it in the hand of the author of life. 
Praise God. Can I tell you something tonight? This is Bible study. And practical teaching is very important. The more you do it, the more you get better in it. You might do it once a day, the next day two times, the next day three times. Before you know it, it becomes your body attitude or your character. It becomes a second nature. And what are you doing? You are acknowledging God. Praise God. It is very important. Amen? Amen. And he looked up to the heavens. And what happened? And my understanding did what? Returned unto me. After seven years, his understanding was given back to him. He returned when he looked up and recognized God. So now it is very important for you and I to understand where our understanding comes from. Know where your ability comes from. Knows where your knowledge comes from. If you are listening to me tonight, this will enable you never to boast. Amen. Never think you are better than anybody. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And if Nebuchadnezzar had looked at people that are dumb, that are like animals, that are ugly to his side, that are unqualified, on, on, they are not educated, they are not intelligent, they are not smart, their nails are not properly done, and they laugh at them. When he has to look at himself, he recognized that because his nails has been done, doesn't make him better than others. It was God that Amen. did his nails for him. If he looked so good as a man, it was God that gave him that look. Yes. Praise God. And if he had an architectural knowledge, an ability to build a kingdom, it was a king of glory that gave him the knowledge. Amen. Because everything was taken from him. If he has the ability to sit on the table and he knows how to use the knife and the fork and the spoon, and you see somebody who came from the bush or never had to see fork or knife and they eat them with their hands, don't laugh at them. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Talk to somebody and say, don't laugh at them. God gave you the privilege to eat from the table. Amen. Shout amen. amen. And in case he has to laugh at those that can't even use spoon, when God reduced him, what was he using? His mouth to eat grass. And when I looked up, I want us to learn something today. When you humble yourself before God, God will exalt you. Amen. And when God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. Amen. Understand that tonight. Don't look at men to lift you up. Don't look at any man to lift up your ministry. Don't, don't try to jump around people and demonstrate anointing so they can think you are anointed. Anointing is not visible. The one that measures anointing is above. Praise God. Anointing is in the secret. You travel in the secret. Amen. You, people don't even know you pray for them. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not written on your forehead. But God knows what you do in secret. And he said, I will reward you openly. Amen. That is the reason why men will try to bring you down. Listen to me tonight. If God has lifted you up, they are wasting their time. Amen. Effort will be made to destroy what God is doing with you. But the more they show up, the Lord, the Lord will use them to be a stepping stone. A ladder to where he wants you to be. Amen. You don't fight that. It is not a struggle. It is divine. Nebuchadnezzar undermined every warning from Daniel. Daniel was torn, tried to convince him, speak to him, encourage him, talk to him. King, if you need help, I will help you. I will guide you. You don't have to go through this. Just stop mistreating people. Daniel gave him two principles that we have had all this. And he played around with it for 12 months. If you are hearing me tonight, 
wherever you are listening to this message, I beseech you and I plead with you. Don't mistreat people. Amen. Amen. Don't look down on anybody. Don't, don't desire anything in your heart to hurt people. Amen. And if you come to church with a purpose to create problems, you know deep down in your heart, stop it because the Lord will visit you. If you are hearing this tonight, wherever you are, in London, in Asia, in Africa, in Mexico, wherever you are hearing this message, if you know the confusion and the problem that is going on in that church, you are the one behind it, run to the altar. Amen. Why am I telling you this? The Lord will surely visit you. Amen. Yes. It costs you nothing to repent. But you have so much to lose in this life and in the life to come if you fail to do that. Yes. Nebuchadnezzar had to suffer 12 years. Look at him. He, is, he was so powerful that he determines what you eat. You have to eat this. You have to eat that. Daniel had to say, no, I am not eating from your table. Listen to me again tonight. Nobody determines what you eat. Amen. Shall we amen. Can you say to somebody tonight, the Lord will provide for you. Let somebody put their best meal on their table and flash it in your face. If it's only one carrot you have, lift it up and glorify God. Listen to me. If it's only one cucumber you have, lift it up and glorify God. Amen. Eat it with joy. You will see the blessing of the Lord. Amen. I looked at the life of Nebuchadnezzar. It is a life that any normal human being could have desired. A king. You come into his house. Everybody organized. A king. You don't like the visitation when God came to his house. So be careful what you admire. It's not the amount of gold and jewelry and expensive clothes you wear into the church that tears off your prosperity. Amen. Amen. You could look golden, but your soul is suffering and rusty. What will it profit you? If you gain the whole world. I mean, what is your gain? I mean, when we hear the word vanity, we still do not have a full grasp of it. But I want to explain something to us tonight. Let us, let us forget the mentality of death is the end. Believers, this mystery has been given to us as children of God. Death is the beginning. When you die, you do not lose your memory. Understand this tonight. Actually, when you die, you are as more real than any other thing because all truth are now revealed to you. Yes. That man, that woman, that boy, that girl that you think it hates you, when you die, you find the truth. Who is really your friend? Jesus said, Amen. listen to this tonight. The rich man died. He remembered his house address. Pay attention. He spoke into Abraham. Please send somebody. To where? To my father's house. He knew he had brothers that are still living his life. So they might not come into torment. Please send somebody. Which means... There was some mental consciousness. Understand this. God is telling us the lie between death. Death is you putting off this clothes and putting on something else. Death is taking away falsehood. And truth is revealed. Reality appears. But no going back. Nebuchadnezzar had a chance my prayer tonight as we listen to this teaching 
our life will be transformed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Write it down. One simple truth is that God is faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's faithful to his word. Take note of this. He's faithful to his promises in your life. He's faithful to everything he has said he will do. With this knowledge, this should wake us all up. That every word of God, pay attention, every vision, every dream, every revelation will come to pass. Amen. When he said, I am coming back again, he will. When he said with the blast of the trumpet, he will. When he said the dead will rise first, he will. They will. And they that are alive will be caught up in the air. It's going to happen. Amen. Why? He is faithful. His word can never what return void. And he has proved it in the life of Nebuchadnezzar. Do you want to see how faithful God is? And sometimes in the eyes of man, it looks impossible when he promised Abraham and Sarah a child. Even when Sarah and Abraham tried to make up the situation, God said, my word will surely come to pass. Amen. He says, Sarah, I need your body. Huh? Man could disqualify it. I have not. Amen. I still have something in you that will bring forth a song. Amen. Shall amen. amen. Why? Because he is the maker. And at this moment, he showed Nebuchadnezzar how powerful of a God he is. He touched every area of Nebuchadnezzar's life. He judged his face. He judged his look. He judged his continent. He judged his diet. He judged everything. Why? Those are the things that Nebuchadnezzar have lifted up that, uh, that seem to be above God. I speak to you tonight. God will judge everything. Even the message I stand here and preach, he will judge it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Every preacher Every minister of the gospel, you will answer to the message you preach. Yes. You will stand to explain it. And if you mix it up, if you try to dilute it, try to change it, try to make it look comfortable for the people, you will answer to the one who sent you. Amen. amen. Somebody shall be amen. One important message. One thing that should never be left out is to let people know to depart from hell and go towards heaven. Amen. His death on the cross is a death of redemption. Amen. That souls might be saved. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar suffered. And do you know something that could have been avoided? Can somebody shout amen? amen? Do you know it could have been avoided? Yes. In what way? Somebody help me. By doing what? Yes. Repenting. And turning around. And follow what? The instruction that have been given. But he said no. Shout amen. amen. Shout amen. amen. Take note of this also. Write this down. We should apply the word of God we should apply the word of God in our daily lives. Amen. Our daily life requires the guidance of the word of God. If not, we will be eternally disappointed in this life and in the life to come. So put the word of God what, into practice. Amen. Put it what? Into practice. There is no shame in it. If you don't know how, ask the question. Amen. Seek help. 
If you don't understand, seek for help. Never see yourself better than what anybody. Do you know how you should see yourself? Do you know sometimes children of the king, they walk around, my father is a king. My father is a king. Anywhere they go, my father is a king. They feel that prestigious behavior. They feel like anywhere they enter, people should leave the way and be at the front. Because now, for you, as a child of the king, you should allow people to go first. Shall we men? And stay at the back. That's how your father wants you to function. The highest position you can ever position yourself is not to run to the front because your father is the king. It's to stay back. Praise God. Why? Your kingship was not done by your power. Write this down. It is a privilege. Amen. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. You are privileged. It is a privilege to have found grace. And Nebuchadnezzar failed to recognize that. He didn't have to go through that. But now he has been restored. Let's see the change here. Amen? First, what did he do? He lifted up his eyes to the heavens. Praise God. And when we pray, what do we do? We lift our eyes to the heavens. Never have a prayer without looking up to the heavens. Because that's where your help comes from. That's where your answer comes from. Shout amen. amen. Look up to the heavens. Amen. Number two. And his understanding returned to him. Number three. What did he do? And I blessed who? The most high. All of a sudden. If he had been blessing the most high for the past 12 months. Before the seven years, he would never have known what he has been delivered from. Do you understand that? Seven years is not seven days. It's not seven months. It's not seven weeks. It was a seven years of horror. There's something that really intrigued my spirit about how God dealt with him. The Lord did not only deal with him outside, outwardly. The Lord dealt with him internally. Because why? Human digestive system doesn't work like a beast. Do you understand that? But God messed him up completely. That his system has to. Can somebody say, God is a, is this mighty God? He's a mighty God. And which means, as he returned him back. He returned himself back because he is God in the heavens, but he rules the affairs of the earth. Every king is under him. Amen. That is the reason why every leader, every president, every governor that is not acknowledging Christ, that is not acknowledging God, we surely will see God visitation. Amen. Believe me, brethren, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of an angry God. He blessed the Most High. And what did he do? I praised and do what? I praised and do what? One more time. I praised and do what? Why? That liveth forever. The situation had to humble him to recognize who was that? Who? who who on earth who could have touched me this way to change me and afflict me and turn me like this must be powerful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Seven years pass. He didn't stop there. He did not stop. What else did he say? Whose dominion is what? And Everlasting dominion. Are you with me tonight? Yes. Pay attention to that. Hallelujah. So, this God that we serve is a God of dominion. Amen. And it's not temporal. 
He ruled yesterday. He's ruling today. And he's going to reign and rule forever. And hear me tonight, I speak this word. He is coming back again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And he will judge the earth with the sword of his mouth. With the sin, he said, we shall come back and I will fight with the sword of my mouth. Amen. That is the reason why your serving him is not in vain. Amen. Praise God. All he needed was to humble himself. Humble enough to recognize God. Whose dominion is everlasting what? Dominion. And what? And his kingdom is from what? Generation to generation. How long did it take this man to discover this? Do you know why he went several years? Because when Daniel first of all visited him and revealed his vision to him, he did not see God in Daniel. He saw him a little bit, but he took him for granted. When Daniel recommended the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, to the office, and he encountered them and threw them in the fire. And the fourth man showed up. He glorified him, but he did not sustain it. He glorified God, but temporary. But when he came back to himself, he felt the man I glorified in that fire did not build. I, I think I have still did better. He opens his window every day and look at the kingdom and look at his mansion and look at his houses and look at himself and look at the mirror and said, wow, I am too good to cause something else in God. This teaching tonight, I pray from the depth of my heart, we turn your eyes away from anything vanity. And we keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hear this tonight. No matter your circumstances, I speak this from the depth of my heart, that you have the grace that even if you have one dollar today, you will bow and recognize God. Amen. That even tomorrow, he handed over one trillion dollars. You will still bow the same way. Nothing will change you will recognize him. Amen. Why? Vanity has no power to alter your praise. Amen. Vanity has no power to alter your relationship with God. Actually, the more you receive, the more humble you should be because God has called you into service. So what he's giving you is for service. Amen. Praise God. And the more you are engaged in that service, you begin to grow. Praise God. And the more you grow, you will experience what? Transformation. Why? Because when he calls you home, everything is done. You're not carrying anything over. Do you know what transformation is? Let me explain something to us. How many of us know water? You can put a bowl of water, right? Right? When you put it on a square on a square bottle or plastic, right? You put it in the freezer for a while. Praise God. When you bring it out, shake, break it off. How will the eyes look like? The square. Why? It's formed. It has been what? Transformed into what? The shape of that one compartment. Praise God. Are you hearing me? So what not, which means that compartment is responsible for creating that shape, but as a result of a consistent abiding and sustaining time. But what happens when that thing comes out? It melts. And you put it in a round shape and put it back. What happened? That same water is going to come out square. Why? A different shape. Why? Because it has taken what a different atmosphere and it's forming that. 
And that is how God, on a daily, daily basis, transform you Amen. into a shape that the devil cannot apprehend. Amen. Are you hearing me? So it describes they that are born of the spirit are like the wind. So somebody can see you in a square shape today and think you are nothing. By tomorrow, the Lord has created you and made you in a diamond shape. Lord, are you that same person? Do you know why? You are constantly in his presence experiencing what transformation. And how does that come? Romans 12. He said, you know what? Conform to what? To the pattern of this world, which doesn't want to what? Gather to serve him and praise God. But you are, you are what? Transformed by what? The renewing of your mind through what? The word of God. Amen. And that is the reason why you are not the same yesterday. Amen. You are a new person today. Amen. Are you hearing me? You are not where you were yesterday. Because you are constantly what? Being transformed. The word of God you hear will shape your mind and prepare you for, your, for his coming. Amen. Are you hearing me? And if the Lord is going to be coming in the next one hour, you're going to be in a whole different form. And when the rapture takes place, you're going to be in a whole different form. Uh, can somebody tell you what that final form will be? You will do what? Be like him. Shout amen. amen. So he will build you up and prepare you daily as you serve him, serve him, and in that service you are growing, you are experiencing so much learning and understanding. Until a time of what? Transformation. So you experience what? Daily what? Transformation. It is very important that we know that in our work with God. And that is the reason why it is a blessing to constantly be in the service. Amen? It is what? A blessing to constantly what? Be in the service. And when you are in the service, you don't see yourself. You don't see I. You don't see me. You don't see my power. You see the hand of God. Amen. It becomes very difficult. I mean, visually impossible for you to look down on anybody. Amen. Why? The grace and the ability to identify with anybody at any level. Why? Because that is the example of who Christ was. And those that follow Christ are called Christians. Christ-like. Shout amen. amen. And when Nebuchadnezzar went off and on, off and on, he get caught in a situation that led him to suffer seven years. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And all that he thought he had was what? Vanity. None of those things could rescue him from the true king and the real king. Verse 35. Verse 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth. And all the inhabitants of who? Of the earth are what? Reputed as what? Nothing. And he what? Do, and he does it according to his will in the army of heaven. Oh, and among what? The inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him what doest thou nobody can challenge God Amen. I said nobody can challenge your God Amen. the God of our father Abraham Isaac and Jacob our Lord our Redeemer our Savior Jesus Christ Amen. died and rose again no one can challenge him. Amen. The grave could not hold him. Amen. Yes. He died and he rose again. Amen. And that same power of restoration, he has placed it in our mortal body. Amen. And that is the power that quickens us on a daily basis. Amen. We must daily recognize that power. And you will daily experience restoration. Amen. Shout amen. amen. 
verse 36. Two more verses for chapter 4. At the same time, my reason returned unto me. Sometimes some people have to suffer to learn. Unfortunately. Pay attention and write this down. When you are going through and you have a problem, know those to share it with you. Nebuchadnezzar needed help. And God did not leave him. God provided him help. But he neglected it. So amen. amen. Also take note of this. Any solution outside God, flee from it. Any solution, no matter how good looking it is, no matter how sweet the offer is, flee from it. You need wisdom. Don't be too anointed not to apply wisdom. Amen? Amen. There's different, there's different between spiritual intelligence and spiritual experience. Experience, you cannot buy it. The prophet of old have to apply wisdom if they have to survive. They apply spiritual what experience if they have to survive. They know the anointing they carry, but they recognize who gave it to them. They were not ashamed and not afraid to ask questions. Shout amen. amen. They were not afraid to seek for help. Many things, if I ask for help, it looks like I, I am not. It's demonstrating my incapability. No. I'm going to give us an example. I mean, the first know Prophet Samuel. Prophet Samuel. Who is he? The one that anointed who? Saul. And anointed who? David. Let's, let's look at it from the human point of view tonight. So that we understand wisdom. Amen? We need it in our daily life. The Lord told him, pick up the jar of oil. Right? Go to Jerusalem. Go and anoint what? Who? David. The son of who? Yes. Why? I have rejected who? Saul. He's no more what? King. Shall we, man? Amen. For you and I. Thank you, Lord. Carry the oil. Going to where? Jerusalem. Who are you going to pass through? Saul. Saul, I'm in town. So I'm not the king. The Lord is done with you. Samuel would not have reached the house of Jesus. <laughs> Pay attention to this. So it's all right. You need a escort. You need a ride. Oh yes. Send your drivers to follow to take me there. And that is fair way to Samuel. You will wonder why did God not help me? Why? Zeal with no knowledge. Say Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, deliver us from spiritual foolishness. Somewhere the government said, Lord, thank you for this mission, but <laughs> when I go there, <laughs> what will I tell them I'm here for? Because Saul will put my head, what, on a chopper, period. Can that, is it not important we true to ourselves? The Lord said, that's a very good question. I will give you the answer. So it is good to ask questions and seek answer from God. So we do not lean on our own understanding. Can somebody help me? What did God tell him? The Lord said, when you arrive and they ask you, what are you doing in town? What do you say? I have come to what? Worship in Jerusalem. When you tell them that, nobody will bother you. Say, Lord, in your assignment, give us the words to speak. Samuel came into town, and truly they knew when this man is in town with oil, something is in town. God is involved. Prophet Samuel, yes, you are here. Is it well with us here? Yeah, it is well. Why are you in town? I have come to worship. Why? Anointed David is a form of worship. That is mystery to the natural eyes. Amen. He was able to accomplish the mission. 
give them the right answer that they cannot interpret, which is mystery, and left. Shout amen. amen. Do you know there are answers that God will give you that are mystery? Yeah. That they cannot interpret. By the time they interpret it, you have finished the mission. Wow. Huh? Shout amen. amen. So, this man, verse 36 and 37, we're going to read. At the same time, my reason returned what unto me for the glory of what? My kingdom, my honor, and brightness returned what? Unto me. And what? My counselors and my Lord sought unto me. And I was what? Established in my kingdom. And excellent majesty was added unto me when I look up to the heavens. God will honor you. Amen. So Lord, teach me to look up to you on a daily basis. Say, Lord Jesus, on a daily basis, I am weak. You are strong. Say, Lord Jesus, on a daily basis, I am blind. You are the sight. I am dumb. You are my voice. I am deaf. You are the one that hears it for me. Lord Jesus, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, on a daily basis, I can walk. You are my feet. Order my step. Make this your daily life. While you are driving on the road, you are pumping gas, you are in the grocery store. Lord, I commit my house. I commit my church. Sometimes you remember your pastor. Lord, bless the pastor. Lord, protect him. Amen. Lord, guide him. Amen. Give him wisdom. Amen. Help him not to act up. Enter my mind. The devil, I can't. No, Lord, help me not to cry. <laughs> Sorry, man. Lord, please, when he sees me, he shouldn't yell. You can speak in tongues now. Holy Ghost, I can see the anointing. Sorry, man. At least help him to smile. <laughs> you think the Lord will answer? He will. That's my prayer. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm always making mistakes that he discovered. Lord help him. There's something, Lord, just happening. Why is that when it's when I see him something fall? <laughs> Don't you know the gospel begins from the altar? We gotta be true, amen. And you know what? The Lord will answer. Final verse tonight. Are you blessed tonight? Yes, we must pray for one another. Ministers need prayers, your pastors need prayers. Your leaders need prayers. Our mothers need prayers. Our elders need prayers. Verse 37. And I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and insult and honor the King of heaven. Oh, Jesus. The same man. I know this time around, his nails came back. So when they when when they when they treating his nails, at least those that are doing it, he respects them. Yeah. He will appreciate them. Praise God. You know? Not that they chop his finger a little bit and he gets angry. No. <laughs> oh no. The king of heaven. Wow. So he recognized another king. I want you to always recognize there's a king. There's a throne in your heart. A king must be sitting on it. The devil don't like that. But say, you devil, you are not my king. You are not my lord. I give you no honor. But Jesus is my king. The king of glory. He sits 
at the throne of my heart. I honor him with every breath. He has brought me this far. He woke me up this morning. Oh, that shit, that was he loved me so much. And all whose and all whose what walk are true and his ways, judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able. Oh, can you listen to this man speaking? He has recognized that somebody was walking in pride. He knows what happened. And he's walking anybody. He's warning anyone, everybody who might choose to go on his footsteps. Say, so listen, don't try it. I tried it. It was bad for business. I tried it. I just came back from seven years. And I don't like the pictures. Those are pictures I don't want to see. So, he's warning if you are walking in pride, he is able to abase you. Stop on your feet tonight. Say, Lord, in place of pride, we have a robe of humility. If you are hearing this teaching tonight, say, Lord, humble me and my heart. Humble me in ministry. Humble us in this church, Lord. Let this church walk with humility. Amen. Let the Lord that the Lord has blessed us with in this ministry, let it so spread to everyone. Amen. That anyone that comes in is received with a wide hand. Amen. I assure you by the love of God that we've been blessed in this place. You cannot come in here and not find a shoulder to put your head. Amen. That is the blessing of God and the love of God. And I pray that we continue. If you are hearing this teaching, I pray that be your life Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we've learned a lot. Amen. We humble ourselves before you. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you. That we are not just hearers of these teachings, but we shall be doers of them. Amen. Is it easy to do it? No. We cannot just declare it is easy. We need your strength. Amen. We need your grace. Amen. We need your mercy. Amen. Come inside of us, Lord. Amen. Dwell in us. Empower us to walk in humility and to walk in love. Amen. Say, Lord, help me to walk in love. The love that comes from above. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your hands together.